Welcome to another red tag fly tying video. Uh, today we're going to be starting with some black thread. And start that a couple of mil behind the eye, working our way back towards the rear of the hook and the bend of the hook using the excess thread to control your thread wraps just to get a nice clean wrapping of thread from the start of the fly to the tail of the fly. Once we've got to the bend of the hook, start going back forwards just to in front of the barb of the hook. And trim off the excess. We now need to find some thing for our, some tail material, in this case Coctillion Dark Sparkled and we'll pull a, a small section of the feather off and form up our tail. The tail should be around about the length of the body of the fly. So just a quick measure and set the tail in with a first initial wrap and then start wrapping back towards the rear of the fly and where we want our body to finish and our tail to start. Uh, wrap underneath the feather to fix it in place and then start wrapping forward all the way through to the front of the hook so that we get a nice even body and tie in any loose bits associated with the cockpillion on tail. then start wrapping all the way back to the point where we want to set in the first of our CDC feathers that are going to form up the body of the fly. So in this case it's going to just be a dark grey CDC. Extra large feathers I find work best because they give you plenty of feather to work with. So lay the feather against the back of the hook, one wrap around and then pull the feather through to the point where you're happy to tie it in permanently and then wrap using your thread move back towards the rear of the fly to fix the feather in and then again forwards all the way through to the front of the hook. Now with a hackle plier of choice fix the base of the feather into your hackle plier and then from here begin wrapping the feather around the hook itself and the first wrap I don't tend to twist too much and then from there on in it will be twist and wrap slowly moving forward towards the front of the hook and to the point where you would like the body of your fly to end. I tend to try and make it to about two thirds of the way towards the front of the hook. Once you've got your feather wrapped forward, we now need to fix it in with a couple of thread wraps. So I tend to wind my thread back towards where the feather is finished and then do two wraps around behind where I'm fixing it in and then two in front and from there it should be held in place and you can now release the hackle plier and trim the feather off. It's now time to try and trim the, the body up a bit um, so yeah to get a nice conical shape I just trim the, the excess feather off on a bit of an angle pointing back towards the rear of the fly to make it a thinner piece. It should naturally end up like that a bit anyway. And then just clean that up a bit until I'm happy with how it, it kind of looks. Make sure you've trimmed off the base of the feather cleanly. From here we now need to start with the wing um, and what ultimately becomes the, the body of the fly or the front section of the fly I should say. I 
I pull my thread out and just let it dangle and spin on its own because that will unravel it a bit for when I need to split it. So I'm going to use dark brown Ultra Select XL CDC feathers and there will be three feathers in total that I use here because it's a size 12 hook that I'm using and quite a reasonably large fly. So I'll pull three of those feathers out and once I have the ones that I'm happy with they should all be roughly the same size and um, shape. I will then pull on the feather uh, from the, the pointy end back towards the base and try and get all of the frongs of the feather not at about 90 degrees to the, to the stem of the feather. Do that for each of the feathers. Then using the CDC magic tool, in this case it's a petagene one, um, I'll find one that is the, the correct size for my feathers. In this case it's the medium. And I'll insert the feathers into the groove. So you hold the feathers flat against the base and then push them down into the groove and all of the frongs of the feathers should then stick straight up out of the, the magic tool. And then trim off each end so that I've got a neat piece of feather to work with. And then using the feather clip, grab all of those feathers from the magic tool and capture them in the clip. Once they're captured into the clip, I will then trim the stems of the feathers off. So I'll rest them against my finger and then just using a pair of scissors, trim up and along the base or the stem making sure that I've got a few mil of, of feather that I can capture in my thread, poking out the top of the clip. Okay, now it's time to split the thread. So I'll get my needle. And rubbing the thread flatten that out on the top of my finger. I'll then pierce the thread with the needle, split it in roughly two, and hold that apart with my fingers. And get my feathers in my feather clip and insert that into the split thread. I'll then wiggle the, the clip forward to the point where I'm happy with where I've positioned the thread across the feathers themselves. I tend to try and leave as little as I can poking out one side of the thread. And it's now time to spin the thread in an anti-clockwise direction to tighten all of the thread back up again and capture the, the feathers permanently within the, the, the split thread. If I'm not happy with how tight it is or what shape it is, I'll just spin again and, and then pull the thread back up into the bobbin and that will spin it even further and tighten everything up so that you've captured the feathers and you've got a, a nice sort of C to C hackle going on. It's now time to start wrapping it around the body of the hook. And you just wrap, pull back and slowly move forward towards the eye until you've wrapped all of your feather onto the base of the hook and you've formed up the body of the fly. And you want to try and finish as close to the hook eye as you possibly can without crowding it too much. A few thread wraps around to finish off. Then grab your whip finish tool and a couple of whip finish wraps to finish off the head of the fly. And you're pretty much at the point where the fly is now completely formed. I also like to put a little bit of glue on there, um, which is absent from the video, but yeah, it's just 
holds the thread in place. You're now at the point where you could quite easily fish this fly. However, I like to uh, trim the feathers up a bit and just flatten off the, the bottom of the fly so that it sits nice and flat and square on the water when it's being fished. So I'll just dress the feathers up a bit, pull them forward and then up. And get out my magic toothbrush tool. and use them to sort of work the feathers towards the, the top of the fly a bit as well. I just find the toothbrush does a neater job. Then it, you trim off any excess feathers that's, that are sticking out below the bottom of the body of the fly. And I just trim this up until I'm kind of happy with how that base of the fly looks, remembering that the fish are looking up um, at these flies on the surface, so having a nice shape to the, the bottom of your fly is hopefully going to make it present better to the fish themselves. You could leave the fly like this and quite easily fish it at this point, um, but if you wanted to shorten up the wing a bit and make it also look a little bit neater, um, you can do some additional trimming uh, to sort that out. In this case I'll do it just to show you how or the, the technique. I'd normally fish it just like it is. So I'll pull all of the feathers down and then using my scissors decide on the length and cut straight up to the body of the fly from the bottom. And the fly is now essentially finished. Now we have our little brown dung. You look at it from the bottom it looks Kind of nice and buggy. Thank you for watching.